Previously on Grass Rats Garage. My water tower's here from a train layout. Yes. <laughs> what? What happened to my package? It was just here a second ago. I think I just got hit by a porch pirate. Why are you having stuff sent here? I got hit by porch pirates last week. It's still my water tower, Terrell. My water tower. Well, what's in this box? Oh, that one? That's my vintage minibike engine. Oh, really? Well, let's see what you got here, Slipper. What the heck is this? They said it was all ready to go. Complete engine. Yeah, looks like you're gonna have to put it together, Slippers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Me. Do you think you can do it for me, Terrell? I want 200. And that's just to get started. Fine. Now this motor's got points, so we're going to put our points cam back on, and it's got a little arrow on it on the outside, so that's how you know, there's the arrow, and if you try to put it on backwards, it's not going to fit all the way down against it, so arrow out, and then here's our ignition. Now this looks like somebody might have cut the wire and put some tape on it. This looks like an original condenser. Let's take a look at the points. Take the cover off. Mm, it's hard to tell if these are new points or not. Let me look under my magnifying glass. It's hard to tell. So I'm going to take the points out. I'm going to take the points and condenser out. And then I'll show you how to replace the points and condenser. Now on these Tecumseys, they tell you right there, set points 20 thousandths. Tells you right on the little cover there. So you want to undo this nut. And there's usually a washer on there. And you got your wire for your condenser, your coil wire. There's a wire coming off that lighting coil. Then you undo the screw that holds the points in. And then pry the points out. And it's got a, either you can use a screwdriver or it's got a quarter inch head on it. Take the screw out, you got a ground wire there from the coil. And then take off your condenser. So whenever you do points condenser, I don't care what motor you have, you always want to replace both of them. You don't want to replace just the points. You want to replace them in a pair. And I'm gonna tell you a little story about a guy came into the shop and he had one of them Kohler Kroller K series engines with the points condenser in it. And he only wanted the points. And I said, you need to replace the condenser too because if the condenser is bad, it's just gonna burn up the points. Now that's not battery ignition. This is magneto ignition. So he goes, no, no, the condenser's good. And what'd he do? He bought just the points. The condenser was bad and it burned up the points right away. There's a little, little tail for you. Now let me talk a little bit more about the ignition system on this here Tecumish, or all Tecumishes that have this Magneto points condenser type ignition on it. You're not supposed to remove this thing or disturb it if you have like a no spark issue. You're supposed to just replace the points condenser. The only time you remove it is if you need to replace the coil. Because you can replace the coil by itself. This coil comes off of this, these laminates. So all you have to do is take a screwdriver and pop this clip off. 
You just pry it off, and then the coil slips off, and then you can put a new one on. And then you have to retime it. Or mark the coil where it was in position on here. You know, you would mark mark it so that way you could get it as close as possible back to where you had it originally because it may affect the way it starts if you've got it off but you're supposed to just pop the flywheel and replace the points and condenser you know like if you got no spark because usually the problem is the points are wore out and that's why you got no spark so you replace the points and condenser all right, we're gonna use OEM point to condenser. Part number 30547A is the points, and 30548B is the condenser. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put our laminates back on the motor or the engine. Now since this one's got the lighting coil, we got a longer bolt here and a short one for the other side. If it was just standard ignition, it'd have two little short bolts. And we're gonna leave them loose because we're gonna have to set the timing. So we're, want, we're gonna want to install the points. That little pin goes in there Pretty simple. And you're gonna wanna clean the points before you put them in. Sometimes they put a preservative on the contacts because they don't know how long they're gonna be sitting on the shelf. Well, I already cleaned these. I use a little carb spray and a rag and a business card. So you're gonna wanna clean them before you put them in. But I already did that save time and we'll put our screw in and we'll just snug it down we don't want to tighten it just want to snug it down and then push this down in there then you're going to turn it to where it's at its widest point which is right here at the highest point of the lobe then you're going to set it with a 20,000 feeler gauge. Now that's what this little little thing over here is for so you can get leverage on it to turn that. But you don't want to force it, you don't want to bend the contacts. So make sure you know you can move this. And put your 20,000s in there. And then usually when you snug it down, sometimes it wants to loosen up. See, it's pretty loose. So I got it snug down, so I'm gonna loosen it a little bit and that's where this final tweaking comes in. Now I got tension on it and I'll tighten it down. And we got a good 20,000. I can feel a little bit of drag on it. Then you're gonna wanna go ahead and clean them again with a business card. Turn it so the points are closed. Pull the business card back and forth. Open them back up. Take the card out. Now in the book, they got a tool that fits in the spark plug hole. And it's got a pin on it. So you could probably make your own out of an old spark plug. And you could drill and tap the side of the plug so you can put a screw. And then you can find a piece of round rod to go in there and then you could set it at whatever it's supposed to be and lock this down because what you're supposed to do is go into the manual and find your before top 
dead center timing dimensions or specs for your particular engine. So in this manual, there is a section where it tells you what it's supposed to be. Dimensions before top dead center for vertical engine. So I already found the one for this engine. It's 35 thousandths before top dead center. Another way they tell you in the manual is to use a scale. But that, that's not going to be real accurate. I'm going to use a dial indicator. I have a dial indicator and I've got a regular spark plug tool and then what they want you to do is since the spark plug hole doesn't match up over the top of the piston oh there goes a the gear head go get it baby position the head find a hole in the head that'll line up so you can position this over the top of the piston and then you're going to want to zero your gauge you're going to want to find where zero is where top dead center is there's ours right there I already pre-zeroed it and then we want to go 35 thousandths before top dead center so I'm going to start bringing the piston down there's 10 there's 20, there's 35. That's not much. Then they want you to either use a piece of cellophane in there or a continuity light. So that's why we haven't hooked up our condenser yet. We want the points to be by themselves. We don't want no other wires hooked to it because the continuity tester won't work. So you hook that to here and you put the other end to ground. And just see, just as I turn this, that's where we want it, right there. That's there, we want it right there. Just to where it breaks the gap. Then you tighten these down. Now we can turn it again. may have to mess with it a little bit you want to get it dead on See, it's real real touchy right there there's just like a sweet spot right there just before it opens So that's how you time one of these. I'll go ahead and crank these down. Now we can put our condenser on. So bring your wires up through here all three of them you want to come up through the condenser here where this little metal bracket thing is and then tighten down the screw being careful that your wires aren't pinched between this And then make sure that this is all the way up against there. Now sometimes this ground wire wants to turn on you too. 
this little ground wire here. All right, so it's nice and tight, and we got our wires up. Then I like to wrap the wire, the condenser wire around the coil wire. And then bring it down around through here. And then we're gonna hook it to our point. Now since we got the lighting coil, this is our kill wire. So you put that cup washer on next, then our kill wire, then our nut. Now if you have just a standard point with no lighting coil, you probably have a separate kill wire. And then that nut is 11 30 seconds. Now you can go ahead and tighten it down. So that's how you're supposed to time this ignition on this Tecumish. Then you can take your points cover and stick it on. You want that to clip in. There we go. You want that to be tight. You don't want that coming off. So I had to tweak it a little bit. You see what I mean? You want your wires tucked in there. You don't want nothing getting in the way of the flywheel. And actually this wire should have ran underneath here. So I made a boo-boo. So I'm gonna have to retime it. This wire's gotta run underneath this leg here. So since I made a boo-boo, which you may do too, that's why it's good to do it this way, I'm going, instead of having to retime it all again and pull all this off and take all the condenser wires off, I'm going to release these connections, shove the wire through it, and shove these back through. So you're gonna to wanna to mark where they're at, red here, black here, and green on top. And then to release these, all you do is get a little screwdriver and you pry, you pry it over and then you can pull it out, see? You just wanna squeeze this. And then when you go to put it back in, just spread that out. And then when you shove it back in, it'll lock in. So I'm just gonna release these wires, shove that wire through there and put this connector back on. That'll be a lot easier than having to take this ignition all back off. I got the wires tucked through and I got the plug reassembled. So now we're ready to put the flywheel on. So here's the flywheel key it takes. It's got a little notch in it. And that faces up and in. Like that. Now, Slipper's flywheel is a little banged up. The fins are. Something must have got in there or came loose. Kind of broke and cracked some of them. But we're just going to use it anyway because it's got all these magnets in it. It's got a ring of magnets all the way around. And that's for that charging coil. So if we just put a regular flywheel from another motor on there, the charging coil wouldn't work. And you'd have no lights. Slippers have no lights on his mini bike. All right, now we'll put the starter cup on. It's got the little indents that go here. I guess I should tilt this back. So that's how this goes, like that. And we got the washer and it's got a special nut that's got a little, little shoulder on it, on these old Tecumishes. Got to make sure that shoulder gets centered on that washer. And that washer is a cupped washer, so it puts tension on it. And we'll tighten that down. I'm sure there's a torque spec on there. And I'll tell it to you in a minute. Now we're ready to put the head on. 
There's the torque spec on the flywheel nut. 360 to 396 inch pounds or 30 to 33 foot pounds. Put our head gasket on. Put our head on. Head's all nice and clean. Did our little hillbilly machining on it. And then we got to put our recoil on. Because three of the bolts. It's a little tricky. The magnets are sticking to it. There we go. There we go. A little stiff. Put our head bolt through there. And we'll snug them all down. And then here's the torque pattern. 200 inch pounds. In 50 inch pound increments. So there, there's your torque pattern. Recoils on, heads torqued. Now we're gonna check for spark. And I'm gonna use this here Briggs spark tester. Oh yeah, plenty of sparkage. But this, uh, didn't realize that little heat shield here is missing. So I'm gonna have to go out in the junkyard, see if I can scrounge up that little shield. Went out in the junkyard, found me that little shield that was missing. And this one actually has this little plastic insulator on here and this metal tab. So what you would do on this one is you could run your kill wire to here, and then you can run this separate kill wire to like a remote switch. And another little tidbit about this, it bolts right here. And you know what's on the other side of this screw? The piston. Now I've seen this before, where people had jammed a longer bolt in there and it puts a dent inside the cylinder wall and then you lock up the motor. So it's very critical that you don't put too long of a bolt in there. That's all the depth you've got. You go any deeper than that, you're inside the cylinder right there. That's where the piston is. The reason these people would do that is on some of these motors, especially snow blowers they use these on, you can hook up an electric start. So you would have to take a screw out because sometimes there would be a gas tank mounted up here and then you would have to put the electric starter on there and then they would take this washer off and then the bolt would be too long and then they would force it in there to make it tight then the next thing the motor's locked up so just be aware of that and then there's a little hole in here so you know what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have to release these wires again so I can fish this through that hole. I installed the muffkin and exhaust gasket and it uses hollow head screws which were missing or Allen head screws. And the exhaust gasket number is 26754A in case you need to know. Also what was missing was the governor lever. So I went and looked up the lever, 33302, and the link was missing that goes from the lever to the throttle shaft. And I looked that up, and that's 37735. And it also comes with a lever, but it didn't tell me that when I ordered it. It just said the link. So I got two levers and the link. Oh, and there's a love note in here from Takamish. 
And the love note says, Dear Terrell, we really love your videos. And we love you too. No, it doesn't say that. It should say that though. It just tells you, if you use the original link, they want you to use this outside hole. And if you use the new link, they want you to use the inside hole. The difference is, this link's got a little kick in it. And the original one just went straight across. So they give you a, a little thing. And then they're, they're scaring you in here too. Please follow these instructions carefully or permanent engine, engine damage may result. You receive this kit as a replacement for an obsolete governor lever and or link. So that's why they got this kit. Another thing, I filled it with dinosaur syrup. And if you don't know what dinosaur syrup is, it's very tasty. It's engine oil. I'm putting 30 weight in there. I like this Kinetics. It's four cycle engine oil and it's got a lot of zinc in it and that's what you want. You want zinc for these flat tappet engines. And that's the little periodic table of elements. Z-N, zinc. So, let me put this on. The lever and the screw was missing but the nut was there. So on here, they put a Star Wars behind it. Isn't that nice to get at? Star Wars and the lever, and then the nut. Yeah, that makes it real nice. I might as well just take this off of here and put it all together. Now I installed the lever which I had to take this off to get that screw and that washer and all that on there. Now if you notice, there's a lot of different holes. So you got different holes you could put the spring in. So if you, this one is all the way at the top. So say you put it in the bottom. Well that's gonna stretch the spring more and then the more tension you stretch the spring, the more tension you put on the spring, the higher RPM you're gonna have. So if you put this spring in this hole here and then put it in this top hole up here, you're probably gonna have the maximum RPM because you're really gonna be stretching that governor spring. Another thing you can do is you can cut segments out of the spring and stretch it even more and even get more RPM without bypassing the governor. Or you can just take the governor off of all the governor and just run it wide open until it throws a connecting rod. So now we gotta put the manifold on and the carburetor. Now look at the carburetor. Looks like it needs a rebuild. Now I have a video that shows you how to rebuild these Tecumish carburetors. And I think it's uh, under like snowblower carburetor, if I'm not mistaken. I think you can go to our playlist and you can find the snowblowers. We have snowblower uh, uh, videos there. So click on the playlist and you can find the one where we do a bunch of these Tecumish carburetors. Now this thing isn't really that bad, but we're going to clean it. We'll put a new bowl gasket. We'll get rid of this brass float because they tend to get a hole in them after a while and it'll pick up fuel and it'll be heavy. We'll put a new needle and seat in it. We'll take this low speed screw out. We'll, we'll give it a boiling. Let me go over this high speed needle a little bit with you and take that apart. There's a little brass washer in there. I don't want the one coming out, and I, I usually use the needle to dig it out, but it's in there pretty hard, so I don't want to bend the needle. There's an O-ring in there, which is hard as a carp, so we'll replace that, that O-ring. Now there's holes in it, which are plugged. There's a little tiny hole right in this area. Yeah, right there. 
There's a little tiny hole that has to be clear. And then you got this hole here too that's got to be clear. So we'll clean up this high speed jet real good. We'll throw this in our ultrasonic cleaner and clean it all up and rebuild the carburetor. But in the meantime, if we want to see if this is going to start real quick, I can spray a little carb spray right in here. And it'll, it should run and die real quick. Let's see what happens. Oh, it popped. Runs, don't it? All right, let's do the carburetor and get this. Oh yeah, one other thing. Look at this manifold. So when this manifold's bolted up there, look at the angle it's at. So when the carburetor's bolted on here, look at how it's sitting. Isn't that funny? You know why? Because this mini bike is probably a Rupp mini bike or some other brand where the engine was like on a wedge mounted on a wedge. So the motor is actually mounted like this on the mini bike. And then the carburetor would be level. So that's how this mini bike motor is, is on there. So when you do that, this has got a dipstick on it. So what's gonna happen when you start tilting it forward? oil's going to run that way and your oil level level is going to be different than what it is when it's in this position. When it's here, it's full right now. When it's like this, we're going to have to put more oil in it. So this one probably holds more than 20 ounces because of the mini bike application it's on. I don't know how well it would run if you put this on a different mini bike and the carburetor's sitting like this. Because that's gonna affect the amount of fuel in the float bowl. It may or may not. We'll find out though, because we're gonna rebuild it and bolt it on there, and we're gonna try to start it when it's sitting like this. Whenever you clean carburetor, there's some certain tools and products that you need. Gonna need uh, a, like a coffee can with some dish soap and water in there. I find that that Dawn works real good. That's a good brand to use. Some Q-tips, a Scotch-Brite pad, one of these little wire brushes, which you can pick up at the dollar store sometimes. Cause you're gonna need that to scrub it. This works for it good for getting in little tight places. Now I soak this in that Dawn in some water and then I sprayed it off real good with some carb spray and I got the carburetor real clean. You got to go inside, do a little scrubbing. Now I got videos on these Tecumish carburetors, but I'm going to go through this one since we're doing a complete engine rebuild. So first thing we're gonna go over is this, this vent hole here. Gotta make sure that hole is clear. Now this is a pretty good size one on, on this carburetor. Some Tecumish carburetors, that hole is tiny. If that gets plugged, that's an atmospheric vent. If that gets plugged, gas will just run out of the carburetor. So that's one thing to look for. If you have a Tecumish carburetor that uses this needle, this long needle, there is a little tube in here that slides up and down. That tube is in, in line with the hole for the low speed. That tube has to slide up and down. If you don't hear it sliding up and down, you gotta get that loose. Sometimes I take a propane torch and heat this up and spray lubricant in there to get it loose. Now, this is how you can tell if it's loose. Listen now. You can hear that little tube going up and down. You can turn it up like this and you can shine a light in there and you'll be able to see that tube blocking the hole where this goes. 
if that tube does not move up and down, this engine will not idle. It'll run on high speed fine, but it won't idle because this is your low speed circuit. Another thing, never put this screw in if you got it like this. As soon as you put that screw in, you're gonna smash that tube that goes in there. You just ruined the carburetor. Gotta make sure that tube is down. So the first thing we're gonna do is put this screw in. We're gonna put our spring on there. Our little brass washer, our new O-ring. Make sure that's down, so you can hear it. And we're gonna put the screw in. Let's just get that out of the way first. Turn it until it stops. And then we're gonna back it half, one full turn. I wanna talk about this throttle. See how that is? Now if you look, it's not getting full throttle. Now since this is gonna be on mini bike, you're gonna want that mini bike to go faster. So what we're gonna do is bend that so we can get full throttle. So we can get some more speed out of it. So you gonna wanna take that kick, that little bend out of the bottom. So we can get that thing to open straight ahead. That's wide open now. Before it was like this. So we'll get some more RPM out of it now. So there's a little trick for you. I also have a video on how to replace this fitting. See how it's cracked? A lot of people break this off and they'll come in and go, yeah, I need that piece. Well, you can't buy just this piece. You gotta buy the whole thing. I got a video that shows you how to replace this. Six. 31807 and now you got to get this out so they tell you to put it in a vise and wiggle it and get it out but you might break this housing around it when you do it that way so now we got to pull this out so what I do is I find me a sleeve or a piece of tubing that fits over that so we know we got the right size and a thick washer and this is a metric five millimeter screw self tapping screw they use a lot of these self tappers on uh, crawler engines they use metric five millimeter it's almost like a 1032 and then you force it in there get the threads started Got to force it in there, put a little oil on it even. Get it in there tight. Get it started. Put the sleeve on, get it centered. Over that fitting. Put that screw in. Center that up, and then that nut, it's like a jack nut. When you tighten that nut, it's gonna pull that fitting out. As long as it's centered. There's dinner. So since this is on a mini bike, I'm sure it's gonna be pointing up like this, right around that position. So that's the thing. You gotta remember which way this thing was clocked when you took it out. So when you go to hit, put on your fuel line, you know, you got it in the right position. And then also blow this out in there in case when you were putting a screw in, some little pieces of uh, metal didn't get in there. So you're gonna wanna blow that out. 
So find out what position. I'm pretty sure on Slipper's mini bike, it's got a separate gas tank, so we're gonna put it like right there. Then we're gonna put it in the vise and we're gonna press that in. So I'm using a 516 socket and putting it on this side, this flat spot of the carburetor, and to act like a spacer. And then I got a little protector in here because I don't want the jaws marring it up. And then like you're gonna use the, the vise like a press. And you're gonna press that in until it stops right on that shoulder. You could use a C-clamp too if you don't have a vise. If you got a C-clamp, that'll work too. There's your dinner. All right, now we're gonna rebuild the high-speed needle. Now this one was pretty nasty. I mean, it was bad enough. I put it in my little blast cabinet and I just gave it little spurts of sand to clean it up. I didn't want to blast it and go crazy on it. And again, remember I told you about that little hole? There's that little hole right there. So you're gonna have to find something small enough to rod that out. Torch tip cleaners work good. And again, this is where your, you know, your Q-tips and stuff come in handy. Spray carb spray on the two Q-tip and stick it in there and get it in there to get everything clean. And then this needle was pretty nasty too and that's where the scotch Sprite come in. Or sandpaper. So we wanted to clean that needle up. So again, you got a spring. You got this little brass washer, which helps from keeping the spring dig into the O-ring. And then we got our O-ring. Turn this in again till it stops. And then one and a half turns is your starting point. Half. One and a half. Now our needle's ready. So here's our carburetor kit, 631-021B. And this has got the needle, the seat, the little hinge clip, the high-speed needle gasket, and the bowl gasket. And then we're gonna put a new float bowl on. 631-867 and we're going to replace that brass float with the new plastic float 632-019A oh look another love note from Takami and what does this one say dear Terrell please take care of our float we love this float very much no that ain't what it says it says this kit has been created to replace the brass float. The new dampening spring included should be installed only if your carburetor was equipped with one. See illustration on other side for spring installation. So this little spring, if yours didn't have one, then you're not supposed to use it. This little spring is mainly on the two-stroke carburetors on snow blowers in that for it to come -ish. It's a cute little spring, isn't it? Hi there, little guy. Hi, little buddy. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do is install the seat. And they make a seat tool to come -ish 670377. Now this is for digging the seat out, and this is for installing the seat. Now you can use a knitting needle if you want to dig the seat out, but this part, I don't know what you're going to do there. So the seat's got a little ring on one side, and the other side is smooth. The smooth side is where the needle goes, so you want to install it on like that. You want to be able to see the little ring when it's on the tool. And to make it go in easy, you might want to put a little lubricant on it. A little penetrating oil. 
And again, you wanna make sure this is all clean in there. So again, that's where your Q-tips come in. I'll even take one of these Q-tips and put it in a drill. And then you can clean. Put some carp spray on there and you can... But don't put this in your ear and clean your ears. Don't do that, that's bad. So we got a little lubricant on it. Now we can drive in the seat. Now our seat's in. Simple, easiest part. Put our hinge clip on. Now, this little edge here, they tell you, when you put it on the float, to make sure that is out. So that little edge, that little end of the clip, you want facing this way. You don't want it facing towards where the pin goes, you want it facing out. Hold the carburetor like that. Put our hinge pin in. Line it up. Now we wanna check our float level. So on a Tecumis, you want it not perfectly level, but you want it sloped a little bit. And the new metal float has a metal tab, so you can bend the tab with a little screwdriver. You can bend the tab to achieve your float level. So that's what you want. You want it to slope down a little bit. You don't want it perfectly level, you want it down at an angle, just a little. Let's more fuel in. And we put our bowl gasket on. And then our float bowl. Now notice our float bowl got a little divot in it. You want that to line up with the hinge. You don't want it like this or like this. You want it to line up with the hinge pin. Push it on. There's our nut gasket. There's our high speeder. Put that in. Tighten it down, 7 16th wrench. Now our carburetor is ready to go on. I found some bolts for the manifold, and I put a new manifold gasket on, and that's 32649A as an atom for the manifold. Now I'm going to put this gasket on the other end of the manifold. And that's 26756. So now we'll put our link in. Hook it into there. So we can put our gasket on, put our screws in that we're missing, that I had to scrounge up. Then we're gonna set our governor once we got this on. All right, so now when I Move our throttle lever here. Our throttle's working. So what we're gonna want is on full fast, and then we're gonna adjust this governor arm here with that screw. So I got the screw loose, and I have a screw loose too upstairs in my head. Now I got it on high. We're holding the throttle is wide open and this thing moves, we want it this way, all the way this way. Then we want to tighten that screw down.
And then you should be able to move this, see? So now our governor's set. And our throttle moves, goes back to... Now, since I bent on that tab to get wide open throttle, it doesn't come all the way back to idle now. So I'm gonna cut that little leg off the bottom. I wanna cut that off. So I just nip that off with a pair of side cutters. Now it goes back to idle. So now we got wide open. Whoa! We're gonna be screaming. Slippers, I hope he don't hurt himself, he's an old man. So this thing was missing the air filter when it come in. So I found this in our junk pile and I sandblasted it in my little blast cabinet. And of course there's a gasket that goes on there and that's 27272A. 27272A. Call me at 27272A. So that's the gasket that goes there. And then this cover was missing. And you could still get this cover. And it's not that much. I forget how much it was, but it was pretty cheap. 31715. And then the air filter, 30727. That goes in there. So that's pretty simple, you just screw that on. Because we're gonna wanna tune the carburetor with the air filter on. Moment of truth, fingers crossed. Got a hook to our test frame. Now, I put a wedge under it, try to get the carburetor as level as I could because if it's too far flat, you know, I might want to leak gas. Then we got our auxiliary tank hooked up and our gas is on. So here we go, I'm gonna give it some gas with the throttle. into this lower hole and then we're gonna see how much RPM we pick up. We only picked up about 100 RPM. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shorten the spring. I'm gonna take the spring off and I'm gonna shorten it. I'm gonna cut about three segments out. Goodbye spring. Then I'm gonna bend this over to make a new end. All right, we started having some problems. When we shut it off and went to cut the governor spring and restarted it, it started missing real bad. So I put an inline spark tester in there and the coil went bad. This is the original coil. You can tell it's the original coil because it's got this on the end. And that's how they came from the factory. 
and then your condenser hooked into there. And then when you replace the condenser, you cut the wire off and put the new wire on. Now, the problem with the OEM part, and, this, and I did get the OEM coil, 30560A, and of course there was no love note in this one. So I get the new coil, and look, the wires, the coil wire and the ground wire, which ran up through the back, are now in the front. So whoever they're having make this coil, they're bringing the wires out of the front now. And that created a problem. So I tried to tuck the wires in as close as I could to keep them away from the flywheel. And look what happened. The flywheel skinned through it. So I, I get it all back together and I'm running it and it's running good. Then all of a sudden it starts missing and popping and then it wouldn't start again. And then I checked the spark and I got no spark or intermittent spark this time. And I'm like, I just put a new coil on there. What the heck happened? That, that's what happened. It skinned through enough. Right here is I'm gonna show you on the flywheel this lip. Here's our points cover, which would go sitting here like this. This little edge, this little ring on the inside of the flywheel was enough to rub on here, even though I tried to tuck these far enough away. Now if the wires came through the back, like the old coil, I wouldn't have a problem. So I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink tubing on here to hold these two together. Then I'm going to take my little angle sander here and I'm going to sand down some of this edge. Now it's not going to affect the balance of the flywheel or anything. I'm going to try to knock that down because it just barely was hitting it. And then I thought, well maybe I could flip the coil, you know, because it's got that clip that holds it in place. So you don't have to pull this off to replace the coil. You just take a screwdriver and pop that clip off and you can slide the, the coil off. You may have to move this, take the bolt out, move that out of the way, and you can slide it off the laminations because we got all our timing set. So I don't want to mess with that again. So you can remove it. So I thought, all right, there's another hole on this side for that clip. Maybe I could spin it and have the wire come out you know, from the back and clip it over here and that would put these wires in the back, but it didn't. It just took these wires and smashed them against the laminate right here. And there wasn't enough room and I didn't want to leave those wires smashed against the laminate by flipping it. Plus, I don't know if by turning the coil like that if it's even gonna work right. Maybe it's gotta be in this position, I don't know. I never had to take one and flip it to the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead, heat up my heat shrink, sand this down. I'm gonna put it all back together and mount it back on the test frame, see what happens now. Well, let me tell you something, this motor has been kind of a little difficult rebuild than normal. That's the problem when you're working on something that come in a box that somebody had taken all apart. You try to think that all the parts are there and then all of a sudden you're going through everything and then you realize there's bolts missing and gaskets that should be replaced that are missing and thrust washers that are missing. But we'll get her done. All right, I got it mounted to a better wedge. I made a wooden block to secure it better. And then of course, when you got it tilted like that, you gotta put more oil in it. So I put some more dinosaur syrup in it. Make sure it had enough. Got the ignition all straightened out. Now let's start it up. I've got, uh, this is my makeshift kill wire going to the green. And then we're gonna check the charging system on it, which operates a headlight. This red wire is the tail light or brake light rather, it's the brake light wire. And the black one is the headlight and tail light. 
So they're AC voltage. So what you can do is set your meter to AC, put your red lead on whatever wire you're checking, and your black lead to ground. I got it grounded to the motor. And then I'm gonna hook up a light too to show you that it lights up. And then this is my makeshift chill wire to the green. And I already fine-tuned the motor, which you'll have to do. You know, once you get it running, you'll have to fine-tune it. And they're all different, so there's no exact, you know, oh, it's gotta be exactly at this. You know, we had those starting points, one and a half and one. And then from there, you gotta fine-tune it. That you have to do. which was the green one. Now it runs good. So you see how well it ran and started easy, easy and idled good? A lot of that has to do with that exact timing that we did with the, with the indicator in that. That helps these things start good. So if you're in there monkeying around with that ignition, taking it off and trying to put it back in the same spot and it doesn't run so good, you may have to fine tune it. So we're gonna go over to the bench and I'm gonna show the wiring for this in case you got one of these mini bikes and you wanna know exactly how to wire it and do the switch because there is a diagram in there that tells you where the switch is and where everything goes. So here's the diagram for that three amp system which is on that mini bike. And it shows you, here's that plug. Top one, magneto ground, that was the green wire. Here's the head and tail light wires here and the stop light. It really probably doesn't matter because they're both putting out the same. So they show a switch, magneto ground, so that's your kill switch coming out of that middle one. And then here's your switch for your headlight, which is coming off of that one. Going to your headlight and to your tail light. And then the other one is your stop light. And then they got the switch in there. Because there's your stop light. There's your stop light switch to there. So it's pretty simple. And then down here, they show you like we just did with the meter. AC volt, positive, going to one of the probes. Or one of the, one of the probes going to one of the terminals I'm at. There's the stop light terminal. And the other probe 
from your meter to ground, which is what we did. And then they're saying this terminal here is head and tail light terminal. So it's a pretty simple system. So there. That was a long one, wasn't it? So that's what it takes to rebuild one of those mini bike, to come as mini bike engines. So I want you to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Go to our web store and buy the Carol apparel. And there's your dinner on the Tecumseh engine. Woo! Tecumseh engine rebuild! Woo! Mini bag! Woo! Slippers on a mini bag! Woo! I'm gonna catch that porch pirate. It's the last thing I ever do. Usually I'm taking my nap by now. Come on, little Porsche pirate. He thought he could trick me. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, uh, what happened? Uh, I just dozed off for a second. Great. Now he's got my Chris Tonto Peranto sunglasses. How am I supposed to have clear HD vision at night now? Stinking porch pirates. It's like having me two eyes again! Yeah. Uh, wake up, Kerwin. Get it together. Uh, gotta get that porch pirate. Whoo! Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, we're awake now. We're awake now.